Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Today, the first of our four Elite Eight matchups as we start filling the teams that are headed to Dallas for the Final Four. It's a couple of coaching legends and a couple of Blue Blood teams, the Stanford Cardinal and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame as they meet for the third year in a row of the postseason. The winner of this one gets the first spot in Dallas and a date in the semifinals with either South Carolina or Florida State. So let's take you back two years. And their matchup, Notre Dame and Stanford in the Sweet 16, and it was Lindsay Allen leading the way for the Fighting Irish with what is still her career high, 28 points. But last year in this building, it was revenge for Stanford led by Erica McCall, 19 over 27 points coming in the first half. A dominant performance by McCall and the Cardinals. So now they meet for the third time in a row. Bigger stakes here with the spot in the final four on the line. As we welcome you to Rupp Arena, Beth Mowens, along with Debbie Antonelli. It's those same two players, Debbie, where their team should have a big advantage today with Allen at the point and McCall in the paint. Well, McPaul, McCall has been McBallin, if you will. You heard Rebecca talking about her skill set in the studio. At 6'3", she's a senior, and she has been terrific on both ends of the floor. This is where Stanford has an advantage today inside because she rebounds, she runs the floor ahead of the basket, Ball, and she's got all the intangibles of a great leader and Lindsay Allen she passes the basketball better than anybody in the history of the ACC she's a durable point guard she's reliable and she will facilitate their high-powered offense and for more on McCall here's Allison Williams hey there Beth Stanford head coach Tara Vanderveer had her team watch multiple highlights from last year's meeting with Notre Dame a reminder to them of what they are capable of well Erica McCall or Bird as her teammates call her knows that film very well you see, she had one of the best games of her career that night. So whenever she has struggled this year, she goes back and watches that game film. She said it's an instant confidence booster for her. She also said she's very hyped to be playing Notre Dame once again in Lexington. And you can see why. Her three games in Rupp Arena, she's averaging 22 points a game, leading her teammates to joke that the BBN signs that hang here for Big Blue Nation should stand for Bird's Big Nest. <laughs> She has been having her way, and she's hoping to have it one more time. They will have the size advantage for sure with McCall and Johnson. The shooter is Carly Samuelson. For Tara Vanderveer, over 1,000 career wins and a couple of national championships. And on the other side, without Brianna Turner in the lineup, of course, done for the season with the ACL injury, they will play some small ball again with Allen and Agumbawale coming off her career-high 32-point performance in the Sweet 16. Those are your Capital One starting lineups. Irish and White, Stanford in black. Notre Dame has never lost. 7-0 in the Elite Eight. For a spot in the Final Four and a trip to Dallas. And Brianna Roberson will bring it across midcourt for the Cardinal. Both these teams well prepared. And Carly Samuelson, Beth, you got to defend the three-point line. She's the first pers person on the top of the scout to defend outside the arc. Mama McGraw shaking her head. She torched Notre Dame last year in the win in the tournament for 20 points, including five threes. And boy, both teams struggling with the scouting report, Debbie. I'm going to go under over about uh, 18 threes combined in this game. I expect both teams to take advantage of that weapon. Irish set a new school record this year for three-pointers made, and they dropped a dozen of them in the Sweet 16 win over Ohio State. And Notre Dame will start out in a 2-3 zone. We'll expect to see them play this. Only 77% of their percentage of their possessions defensively during the season have been man. So they don't typically play zone. It's an adjustment by Muffin McGraw minus Brianna Turner to protect the rim. Seven trips to the Final Four, including the 2001 National Championship. They've reached the Final Four five times in six years. The one miss was last year in the loss to Stanford. And Stanford will play a man-to-man, -man and they will switch on certain actions, not necessarily by personnel. Certain actions, meaning? actions meaning like different cuts, different screens, those kinds of things offensively. Here is Allen, going to try and take it the distance, missed the layup. The intimidation factor of McCall, and a good decision by her not to pick up an early foul, trying to challenge that. 
Hope you caught your breath, folks, before we tipped, because both coaches told us in practice they want to go faster today. And for the Irish, that would be more than 99 points as Brittany McPhee hits for three. Notre Dame will put five shooters on the floor, all five have three-point range. And Lindsey Allen is very good at understanding what I call the three W's of a good point guard. Who to get the ball to, when, and where. She's very good at distributing their offense. This is Adun Bawale, sophomore from Milwaukee. Without Turner on the floor, she is probably the biggest beneficiary of more shot opportunities. Which is perfectly fine with Arike, as she told us the other day. She doesn't mind getting some extra shots. There's the double down on the block, the kick out to Roberson. Rebound Irish. Allen looking for Mabry on the move. Notre Dame will turn it over. We'll look at Tara Vandegar now in her 31st season for the Cardinal. Championships in 1990 and 92. She's in the Naismith Hall of Fame and has an Olympic gold medal. And now in her 19th Elite Eight. I asked Coach Vandegar before the game, do you get nervous in situations like this? She said, not anymore, not since I won an Olympic gold medal coaching the 96 Olympic team. My nerves are never on the sideline after that experience. There's nothing more pressure than that. Erica McCall knocking it down. And the early 8-5 lead for Stanford. This, McCall needs to get more touches on the block and inside. They need to go through her with their offense. That's their advantage. Mabry hits both these teams. So well coached, so smart, and efficient running their offenses. It's going to be a possession for possession game. There's going to be a chance for each team to get out to a run, but that's only going to come if they are able to defend. Artis Nizek, who brought them some toughness in their Sweet 16 win at the point. There is Allen. Off the cross and draws the foul. Well, we talked about a couple of coaching legends. We wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of weeks it's announced that Buffett McGraw will join Tara Vanderveer in the Hall of Fame. How about that win total? And both of them over three decades at these institutions. It's uh, incredible, the cultures that they have both built and the identity that they have created and how they've each respectively helped grow the game. Certainly Tara on the West Coast has really waved the banner for Pac-12 basketball for decades. And, you know, she should celebrate and she does celebrate in, in Pac-12 success when it gets to the NCAA tournament. You've got Stanford and Oregon still alive in the Pac-12. You've got Notre Dame and Florida State still alive in the ACC. The one thing that Notre Dame has done really well without Turner, besides shooting the three, is they have all rebounded well, and it gets them in their transition game quicker. They don't necessarily have to make an outlet pass. All capable of boarding it and initiating the, the thrust up the floor. McCall, the 6'3 senior out of Bakersfield, has elevated her game every year. Kaylee Johnson missed it, but drew the foul. And the 6'3 junior from Casper, Wyoming, will head to the line. It's the first on Aaron Boley. Brianna Turner, the 6'3 junior, ACL injury in the second round game against Purdue, is a first-team All-ACC performer as well as a defensive player of the year in the league. And this is where Muffet, I think, at this end was most concerned, right? Her defensive yes. presence sorely missed, especially against Johnson and McCall. Look, Notre Dame can score. They average 80 points a game. We saw them put 99 on the board in the last game against Ohio State. It's, it's her record in the postseason. Beth, it's her ability to protect the rim and to rebound. Mabry, good footwork, short on the shot. And a held ball will stay with Notre Dame. They've got wins over Robert Morris, Purdue, and Ohio State to get here for Stanford, New Mexico State, Kansas State, and then a Sweet 16 win over Texas. Bowley for three. Well, she was impressive getting a start against Ohio State was Aaron Bowley. She went five for 10, four for six outside the arc for 14 points in the last game. McCall, weak side, nice feed by McPhee. Yeah, Erica McCall has incredible hops. She's got length. She's versatile around the basket, left and right hand. I think her WNBA stock has gone up in the NCAA tournament. Both these teams shooting close to 60% here early on. Mabry 
sweeps it up and in. You know, the Notre Dame guards are so skilled. They're so good at scoring at all three levels. They can put pressure on your defense in multiple ways. And I can tell you the guards are enjoying this extra shots they're getting and the space that's been created. Samuelson out of the corner, short, but there's no box out with the Irish in the zone. McPhee will launch and hit. Good assist by Samuelson on the second chance. Really tough to not capitalize on the mistakes that each team has made. You've got to make sure you close out and you box out every possession. Wale. Rebound for Johnson. McPhee off the bounce, gets to the rim for two. Nice job of uh, changing her body in midair to avoid the charge. Fast paced start here at Rupp Arena in Lexington. Westbell, she'll go mid range. One and done on that trip for the Irish. Marta Sneezek is the point guard here handling the ball. She comes off the bench, but Tara Vanderveer thinks she gives them a different dimension offensively. McPhee drives, offensive foul. That will be her first. Stanford with the early lead in the Elite Eight. In, a row in the last four national championships. We've got the last two teams to beat UConn. Overall, it would be Stanford back in November 2014, 110 games ago. The last team to beat them in the postseason, the Fighting Irish in the 2012 Final Four. And how about players, Debbie, that have experience beating UConn on the court? There aren't many of them still active. These are Division I players active. Yes, this is four for Stanford and Alexis Prince, who's still alive, and they will play Mississippi State later yeah. today. Those are the only ones that have tasted a win over the Huskies. I actually carry that box score around with me, that Stanford, uh, you, Connecticut you box score, in case you need it. Just in case. Well, interestingly enough, uh, one of the side stories here is Lily Thompson, who was the starting point guard for Stanford in their win last year against Notre Dame, not playing with the Cardinal this year, finishing up her degree with the intention of playing as a graduate transfer at Notre Dame next year to replace Lindsey Allen at the point. Good D by the Irish off the timeout, forcing Sneezek into a floater. Well, you got to stop the ball if you're Stanford. That's a big mistake. Ogumbawale with the pull-up, and that one was easy. One thing we've come to recognize and expect, Allison, when we see the Fighting Irish is a little color to their game. That's right, Beth. You know, there's so many different components that go into preparing for a tournament, and for the Irish, that includes a trip to the manicurist. Yes, it does. Yeah, it goes back 20 years when they played in the tournament on St. Patrick's Day, decided as a team to go with the Green Nails, and now they do it every year. And I will tell you, even the male members of the Notre Dame traveling squad are not exempt. They got to paint the pinky green. <laughs> Lindsay Allen on the drive. I believe the Irish were uh, hoisting a, a pint of green ale that day in Austin, Texas at first. No, big, huge really postseason win for Martha McGraw. So? Not the players, not the players, of course. Agumba Wale fouled and won. Oh yeah, beautiful. That's back to back transition buckets by Enrique Agumba Wale. Watch the Euro, how she steps around. You take a look at the green nails. That's what Allison was talking about. Boost. <laughs> Two different shades there, but watch this move right here. Step around, nice Euro, high off the glass with contact. She's too strong, and her matchup is one of the ones that Tara Vanderveer was most concerned about coming into the game. 7-0 run for Notre Dame out of the last timeout, and they jump in front. Staying in that zone. They're doing a good job of staying connected and communicating on the back row. 
Samuelson got free in the corner for her second triple from the same spot. You cannot lose Carly Samuelson. You have to be calling shooter out the entire time so everyone knows where she is. Especially right there in front of the Notre Dame bench and the coaches. Agumuale, there they go, posting up the guard again. And the turnaround for Arike. And we have watched her all year, and she is streaky. That's three in a row. 32 points in the Sweet 16 win. That's the third most ever for a Fighting Irish player in the postseason behind Beth Morgan and Sherelle Allen. Notre Dame used to play only 2-3 zone until Muffet McGraw recruited Sherelle Allen. And then they started playing some man-to-man. -man. She really helped change the, that defensive side of the basketball for Coach McGraw. like from her old days at St. Joe's with the heart yeah. right there. I think this plays for a Goomba <laughs> Well, she was doing that the last time up the floor, so there it is again. Get her the ball. They're so good on their pin down action. They do a nice job of really hunting out screens. Let's see if the Cardinal here will hold for one. And get McCall a look. Double Samuelson, she'll jack. And oh, from Dave, followed by the fist pump for Carly Samuelson. And a big finish for Stanford to bounce right back on the Irish. Two-point lead for the Cardinal. Allison will chat with Tara Vanderveer when we come back. And a good sight for Tara Samuelson's third triple of the quarter. Elite Eight matchup, Stanford with a two-point lead on Notre Dame here with head coach Tara Vanderveer. Coach, a lot of offense early in this game. What are you seeing from your team? Well, I like our offense, but I am not excited about our defense. We need to be much more aggressive. Um, people just moving their feet, getting their hands more active. Um, so I hope we'll come out and play better. What are the challenges in this game? You know there's going to be some in-game adjustments, especially when you're coaching against someone like Muffet McGraw. They're, you know, they're excellent shooters. Um, you know, and, and we're not getting anything transition. Um, but I, I feel like we're kind of maybe at the racetrack over here. We just, you know, start a little slow, and we got to pick it up. Tara, thank right, you. Go down the back stretch. <laughs> All right. Uh, that will go over well here in horse country in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Well, Carly Samuelson's three of four from downtown. Of course, her sister, Katie Lou, is starting for the Yukon Huskies. So it's been a busy weekend for Dad John Samuelson. Started out here, got a win in Lexington. Pulled an all-nighter to go see Katie Lou. Got the W in Bridgeport. Hopped back on a flight. And back in Lexington today, another go-round at Rupp Arena. And then a 4 o'clock trip back to Bridgeport later today for Katie Lou's game tomorrow. Well, he might have something to do with a hot streak that Carly has had early on. Three for four to start the game. And you can see Dad's pumped up about it. 60% shooting for Stanford, 56% shooting for Notre Dame. The stars have come to play today. Let's see, Notre Dame is not in their zone anymore. They've gotten into a box and one with Agumba Wale face guarding Samuelson. I think it's a good move by Muffet. You had to get out of that zone. They were shooting it too well. Samuelson and McPhee were killing them. Irish miss inside. And the foul will be on Notre Dame. Looks like it's going to be on Jackie Young, the six-foot freshman out of Princeton, Indiana, and a Naismith Prep National Player of the Year. John uh, sporting the uh, Stanford gear today. <laughs> he didn't have to pack much. A UConn shirt and a Stanford shirt. And here's the box of one on Sanderson. And they'll just bump off on her. Now Lindsay Allen will be on her. Now Gumbawale back. Roberson for three, and the fist pump for John. He's feeling every pass over there for Stanford. Roberson, not your typical three-point shooter, but capable of making them, and a good adjustment by Tara Vanderveer to use Samuelson as a screener while she's in the box and one. Young off the bounce, the spin, count it! So much skill. 
Such incredible upside. Jackie Young, number five for the Irish, just a freshman at six feet tall. Her game has gotten better as the season has gone on because Muffin McGraw has given her more responsibility in their offense. And that's trouble for Stanford because Carly Samuelson just picked up her second foul and she is checking out. She may have to wait until after the free throw. Let's see. Notre Dame is allowed to get a sub in here with their player at the line. So West Feld will go out, replaced by Christina Nelson. Those two gave them quality minutes inside the other day without turn. Young missed it, so Samuelson will have to stay on the court for the time being with the two fouls. When you keep her on for an offensive possession, isn't such a bad thing, except for now Notre Dame has gone back to their zone. They showed a couple of possessions of box and one, Beth. Now they're back to the zone. Foul on the double there from the Irish. Well, the 2017 NCAA Men's Final Four will begin Saturday on CBS at 6 o'clock Eastern. For more information, go to NCAA.com. So there goes Carly Samuelson checking out. Well, she got all those uh, banners up there, the Kentucky men playing Carolina later today. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. That should be exciting. We talk about offense. That's some high-powered scoring machines, Carolina and Kentucky men. Congratulations to Oregon and to Gonzaga. First time in to the Final Four for the Zags. A little West Coast bias going on so far in the tournament. I'm happy for Mark Few. It's the one thing he had not accomplished on his resume. On the drive, and it's Young going to the left hand. Jackie Young is really good off the bounce, and it's a good put job of putting her in the game right now to change the tempo of their offense a little bit. Roberson, they give him a little space up top. Now McCall, here comes the double from Allen, the block by Nelson, and it's a held ball. But we did want to take a moment, Debbie, to recognize for all the Notre Dame fans that are watching, Jeff Jeffers, the sports director at WNDU in South Bend, for four decades. Uh, unfortunately, Jeff passed away this morning at the age of 64. I know he's got a lot of friends here in Lexington following the Irish today. And our thoughts certainly with the Notre Dame family and Jeff Jeffers, legendary voice in South Bend. Uh, condolences yes, to the family and the WNDU family as well. One point lead for Stanford. Roberson looking to add to it. Maybe too quick. Speaking of too quick, here comes Allen. Three on two break for the Irish. Mabry for three. Young tried to tip it to her teammate, and it will go to Stanford. Agumbawale will come back on for Notre Dame. And this is a really small lineup on the floor. For Notre Dame with Christina Nelson at 6'4", the senior playing in the back of that zone. You know, she's got to keep McCall off the glass and keep her in front. And they're going to bring a double, so all Nelson needs to do defensively is wall up on the backside. And that McCall matchup, who I like calling McBall, that's why I keep calling her that. <laughs> she's got game. Johnny Carrington and Sneezik back on the floor for Stanford. And that's a great set right there, Beth. They screen the back row of the defense, and they throw over the top. Nice timing play. That's the first foul on Agumba Wale. She didn't even see the screen. She just ran right over it. Both teams usually quite effective in these set pieces on the inbounds. I like to call those blobs, baseline out of bounds, situational offense. That's a bad pass. Struggling with it right now. It's hard to rattle either one of these teams offensively. They don't make very many mistakes. McPhee on the run. Alana Smith able to get to it. 
Sneezek will try for three. See, now I'm surprised she took that that early in the shot clock. Irish come out with it. Agumboale on the run. Goes to the left side and gets the bump. See, that is a, a big mistake by Sneezek, which you wouldn't expect Tara Vanderveer's point guard to do that. She takes a quick shot. It results in a long rebound and a transition opportunity. And then the foul. Agumboale again stepping around the D. So crafty with the basketball in her hands. And now that is the second foul on Sneezik, so she will depart as Roberson will come back in. You know, Tara Van Beer doesn't really like to play zone. It's more of a sagging man, but they're having trouble keeping the Notre Dame guards out of the middle of the floor. Yeah, it was a surprise in the Sweet 16 win for Notre Dame. They actually outscored the Buckeyes points in the paint, and a lot of it was that dribble drive from the guards. They had 11 threes, and then when they needed to get to the free throw line, they ran through what I would call their elbow series, a lot of their Princeton action. It's a lot of passing cut. Late on ball screen. Smith rips it through to the left side. Good crash of the glass, but unfortunately for Stanford, it was McCall and Carrington tying each other up. Was there a Notre Dame player involved? Apparently there was. Stanford will keep it. You know, ever since Carly Samuelson went out of the game, Beth, the rhythm of Stanford's offense has changed. And as long as it stays a one possession game right here, I think Tara Vanderveer can, can keep her on yeah. the bench. They were up three when she left, so. It's been a four point swing. You see, look at McCall's open. You gotta throw it in there. Off the bounce, Carrington. Air ball. McCall, four shots thus far. Big bump at midcourt, no whistle. Agumbawale driving down the right side off the window. Boy, really high off the glass against the shot blocker. Beautiful finish by Enrique. And that will get Carly Samuelson off the bench. 6-0 run for Notre Dame since she sat down. I think you got to go with who you trust, and you have some inexperience on the floor right now if you're Tara Vanderveer. Look at Agumba Wale. Oh, my goodness! Arike Agumba Wale, 15 in the first half. Reliable, durable, tough off the bounce, right down the middle of the floor, high off the window. Sounds like there were bonus points for Ridiculous. <laughs> good for Coach Landers. Also, Rebecca Samuelson is checking back in. So yeah. a 9-0 run, Debbie, with her out of yeah. the game. The rhythm was off, and you trust your seniors at this time of year. And there's a new set. They're going 1-4 low into their horns action. McCall has, only uh, McCall has only taken See? four shots. Now you got McCall. Dermot. McCall. And she did not get a touch there. Ogubawale has the last six points for Notre Dame. Allen tried to get in on the front. You know, Notre Dame has not had to really go against the Stanford set defense. They've been so good in transition, rebounding, and getting on the move. Roberson, boxing one again by Notre Dame. McCall off the bounce. Do you know what? I like the way she challenged at the rim. She needs to get more touches. Here comes Enrique, the pull up and the drop down. The biggest lead for Notre Dame. Is she going to shoot till her arm falls off? She just might do that, Allison. She's up to 17 points. And she has such a physical aspect to her game, Beth. And you can understand why when you realize she grew up playing with her older brothers and cousins, who themselves went on to be Division I athletes. Her cousin, Diamond Stone, played a year at Mary before joining the Clippers. Her brother is Dari Agumbawale. Now, he was a walk-on at Wisconsin and fought his way to become the, the starting running back for the Badgers. Her cousin, as I mentioned, Diamond Stone, now with the Los Angeles Clippers. She grew up two blocks away from him, so there were a lot of games in the driveway with the boys, football in the backyard, and she said, I learned a toughness because I was always out there trying to play with them.
She's got plenty of toughness, and so does Mabry. Mabry was playing with all her sisters in South Jersey, down the shore. And they have opened up a 10-point lead. It's a triangle and two. Marina Mabry is guarding Samuelson. Yep. Gumbawale is on McPhee, and they're really doing a good job with their defense, making it hard for Stanford to get in rhythm. Can they get that rhythm back, Debbie? Even though Samuelson is back out on the floor, it is still 13 unanswered points since she first had to sit down. Fourth team foul on the Irish. Remember, in women's hoops on the fifth, you start shooting two. Yeah, this is where McCall needs to work to the block. Go, uh, go up against Christina Nelson and challenge her inside. Sometimes McCall doesn't even look at the basket. Alana Smith stripped by Allen. Ogubawale. Dropping it off for Bowley. Had that one swatted. See, she had Mabry open for a three on the left. And Notre Dame doesn't need numbers when Agumbo only has a ball. She's looking to attack. There's a touch for McCall. That's what I want to see them do more. I think Tara Vandergaard wants a little bit of more, more of that as well. Bowley. Good. Timeout, Tara. Mom Mary cheering on her daughter out of Hodgenville, Kentucky in the pride of the E-Town Panthers. The former Kentucky Prep Player of the Year. Back home and rough. So many options, so many weapons, and you've got to match up quickly to the three-point line. When you're guarding Notre Dame in transition, you don't sprint back to the paint, you sprint back to the three-point line. And look at Mary giving a few fist pumps up there. Well, the Notre Dame men's hockey team will look to clinch a trip to the Frozen Four in Chicago today. It's the Fighting Irish against UMass Lowell at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. You and your watch ESPN app. You can also visit NCAA.com. It's the home for all 90 NCAA championships. You know, Beth, we always talk about uh, some of the uh, things that you have to have to be able to take down UConn. And the top of the list is to be able to score from all five positions. You have to make Connecticut play you straight up. You can't let them get into any sort of rotation. And if you can make them play you straight up and not jump you up, and you know Coach Oriam always comes with a game plan, you have a better chance if you can score against them. Roberson finally ends a drought of 10 missed shots in a row. Yeah, I'm seeing Tara Vanderveer go to some step-up screens right now, and I think they, that could be effective for them because it opens up the middle of the floor against the zone. Because you're screening the top of the zone. Mabry short on a few shots here in the first half. McPhee steps around the defender. Bowley had the box out. Three points, three assists, seven rebounds today for Lindsay so far. They had six players in double figures in their Sweet 16 win, a balanced attack. Mabry misses again, and now Stanford has a breakout. Roberson. Going to call a block on Allen. Now remember, in transition, the restricted area is not in play. Uh, everyone is a secondary defender at that point. That's number two now on Lindsay Allen. Will Muffet keep her out there for the final minute and a half? Roberson knocks it down. The senior on a fort in She's California. done a good job, Beth. Excuse me. Roberson has done a nice job. Uh, Sneezing in foul trouble. She's more of their ball control offensive point guard. Roberson has a little more quicks and is a better defender against the, the guards of Notre Dame. All right, let's see if Notre Dame is affected now with Allen on the sideline. Roberson converts the second. Like Stanford tried to get another guard in the game in a smaller lineup. Uh, but I don't think they were able to sub her in before the inbounds. Yeah, the shot clock I don't think started. It's reset to 30. They got to take some time off the shot clock. 
Reminder coming up later, the NCAA Women's Elite Eight rolls on with a matchup between the two seed Mississippi State and the one seed Baylor. That's in the Oklahoma City region. All starts at 7.30 Eastern tonight. And on your devices, tomorrow you'll have Yukon, Oregon, and South Carolina, Florida State as we start filling up the final four. Tara Vanderveer gets Carrington back on the floor in place of Samuelson for a defensive possession. I think it's smart. Who sets the tone here for Notre Dame without Allen? It'll be Mabry. Westfeld, mid-range. Can you make a mistake? They miscommunicated. Did Stanford defensively, and that's the power of Irish offense. Everyone can score. They are shooting 55% so far in the half. Big second quarter for Notre Dame. Got a held ball, will go to ND. What do you think of that matchup, 6-7 six, seven on 6-7? Six, seven. You got uh, Kalani Brown and uh, Tiara McCowan. Yeah. Listen, Tiara McCowan can hold her own position inside. They can play that matchup straight up and guard the rest of the perimeter. I'm telling you, Vic Schaefer's team is going to be ready to go. He's the head coach at Mississippi State, and he's done a terrific job. He's got enough offense, and he's got a terrific elite-level defense. Baylor, meanwhile, has been scoring a ton. Shot clock's under 10. Agumbawale on the crossover. Oh, my God. Agumbawale and a smile for the crowd. Double ice bucket, baby. A little shake and then the finish. Roberson almost got it to go. Fitting that it was she that put the exclamation point on it with a 21 point first half. And Enrique is now standing by with Allison. Thank you very much, Enrique. for Notre Dame for Agumbawale. And it's a 45-31 Notre Dame lead over Stanford. Now let's get you back to the studio with Maria, Rebecca, and Andy. Presented by Capital One. Halftime in Lexington, the Elite Eight. We are 20 minutes away from a spot in the Final Four. And Notre Dame leads Stanford by a couple of touchdowns. As we get set to start the third quarter, the winner here grabs the first spot in Dallas in the Final Four and a semifinal matchup with either South Carolina or Florida State. Baylor and Mississippi State, the game later tonight at 7 o'clock. Beth Mowens along with Debbie Antonelli. We've got Allison Williams as well, and we've got Arike Ogumbawale going wild in that first half for 21. What a huge first half for Arike, who really got them in rhythm. And when Stanford was playing well early, it was because Carly Samuelson was finding her shots outside the arc. They did a nice job of finding her. She made three of four, but she has not scored since the end of the first quarter. And while she was gone to the bench with foul trouble, Arike Ogumbawale put on an offensive clinic. Eight for 10 from the floor, four for four from the line. And Carly is like, please play some defense. I want to get back in because I think I can help stop some of that. Let's check in with Allison. And Tara Vanderveer is saying, please play some defense for Stanford. Really unhappy with her team's defense in that first half. She said they have to work harder. Notre Dame is driving right past us. And against Enrique Gumbawale, they have to be better about taking away her strengths, which isn't easy because she's so athletic. Now, offensively, for the Cardinals, she said Notre Dame has done a good job of taking away Brittany McPhee, Carly Samuelson. They're leaving other players open. They have to hit those shots. And here comes that Notre Dame attack again, shooting 56% in the first half. And Debbie, even without Turner, they have owned the paint because of the dribble draw. Oh, you could make an argument that they are better offensively without Turner. It was a high-low game. Turner was a put-back, offensive rebound, stick-back, drop-offs, those kinds of ways of scoring. Alley-oops. Roberson short on the shot. It's interesting you could make the same case for South Carolina without Absolutely. Coach. Chill, eh? Absolutely. Coach I think the they're other. better offensively with one big yep. post player who's out for the tournament. 
Carolina's got Florida State in an Elite Eight matchup tomorrow. At least Roberson was trying to probe and transition. Notre Dame did a good job of getting back. And that's what's going to have to happen for Stanford to dig back in. They were hitting threes in the first quarter and got out to a lead, and McPhee able to knock one down there. You know, earlier, the ball hit the official, and the official was inbounds. As long as the official's inbounds, the ball's still in play. Irish able to clean it up, a Goomba Wale. Nine for 11, 23 points. Her career high was 32 two nights ago. McCall, here she is using the window. Good deep position at the front of the rim, using her offhand to counter with her left. Now, Stanford's gonna have to get some stops. It's McPhee on a Goomba Wale. Got a tap of it. And Roberson really closing down the space on Mabry, not giving her any room. Allen off the bounce, left-handed. And that's gonna go to Stanford. Well, tonight at 11 Eastern, close your weekend with Sports Center at night with Bucci and Levy as they'll break down the men's and the women's Elite Eight games. They'll have reports from the annual NFL League meetings in Phoenix as well. Sports Center at night, also streaming live on your ESPN app. And I believe they've actually called a foul there, and that will be the second on Marina Mabry. Sneezik with the skip to Samuelson. They were both limited with a couple of fouls in the first half. See, Sneezik's gonna have to look to be a scorer because Notre Dame's not gonna guard her. McPhee will launch again, short. No box out from Mabry, so McPhee will have a second chance. See, McPhee follows the rule that I think is right. Only follow your shot if you think you're off. And as a shooter, you know when your shot's off. Good job by her to follow. 13 now for Brittany. See, now Notre Dame is going to go back door a little bit. Oh, nice, nice dish. Alan Westbell, the ACC's career assist leader, drops another dime. Look for Notre Dame to get something going back door because Stanford now has picked up their defensive pressure. They're a little bit more up the line than they were in the first half. Nice step back there by Alana Smith. She had the hot hand for Stanford over the last month or so of the season. Carried it over into the tournament. Took a new way, Beth. Now they got it to 11. They can get a stop here, get it to single digits. They can get a little momentum. Avery off the bounce. Westbeld rebounds. Let's see if they run something for a Goomba Wale here with an ISO and clear her out. They'll go to her side, number 24 in white. She'll put up the three. Moonshot was way off. I think McPhee got a piece of that. Well, I'll tell you what, if you told Muffet McGraw she could be even on the glass tonight with Stanford, she would take that with a laugh and a smile on her face. Absolutely, because not the same athleticism on the front line. And there's a poor decision by the freshman. Now Notre Dame starting to feel a little game pressure back. And there's McPhee delivering for three. Timeout, Notre Dame. Well, congratulations to the Oregon Ducks, the third double-digit seed to make it into the Elite Eight. They're trying for their first Final Four. So is Florida State. They are into the Elite Eight. And UConn keeps rolling. Gino Tiny Pat with his 112th tournament win. How about that last basket? And then the reaction, Allison, from the bench. Brianna Turner standing up, cheering on her teammates. She has really made a point to be positive and upbeat even after the injury. She told us, hey, I'm still me, just with the busted ACL. She said, I can't be in a down mood. I'm not going to help anyone if I am. So she's just been really high energy, trying to bring a lot of humor, too, to this team. Well, they could use some right now because it's a 9-2 Stanford run, and the foul right there will get the Irish to the line. The two-time ACC Defensive player of the year. She was averaging 15.7 rebounds and had won 93 of her 100 games in a Notre Dame uniform. That's how valuable she has been. 
Well, we were talking to Brianna Turner and her teammates the other day, and we were talking about how others were going to get more shots, including Arike. And she says, I hope Arike gets more rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think Arike is only thinking shots yeah, right now. Yeah. Arike is thinking, hey, if I don't miss, I don't need to worry about no rebounds. There's a rebound for Notre Dame, and this is Allen. So good at probing, pull it back out, assess, look at a matchup you might like, and that's one that Jackie Young might be able to take advantage of. There's that four guard look again with Young now in the game. I bet Tar Vanderveer challenged Brittany McPhee defensively and said, you're gonna have to stop Rike Gumbawale if we're gonna get a chance to play in a final four. She's done a good job so far. Last touch by the Irish. We've got a timeout on the floor, under five to play in the third quarter, Notre Dame on top. They are en route to a possible fifth consecutive national championship. The heavy favorites will be essentially at home against Oregon in Bridgeport Monday night. Yeah, it's like a home game. And Oregon's got their hands full. And Kelly Graves has done a fantastic job with three upsets to this point to get his team to play Connecticut in the regional final. And UConn has got a lot of offense to defend. Notre Dame has the lead. What were they talking about in the huddle, Allison? Shot selection. Muffet McGraw felt like they took some bad shots the last couple times they had the ball. They just wants to make sure that they continue to spread it out and use the ball screen. Also, they expect Stanford to get a little more aggressive. She said they're going for steals. You have to meet the passes. And Notre Dame comes out of the timeout defensively, Allison, with a triangle and two. And Alana Smith makes some pay. She was unguarded at the top of the key. She wasn't one of the two. No, she wasn't. And the triangle scores. Under four and a half to go, and it's a two-possession game, and then Westbelt knocks down another mid-range. You know, interestingly enough, Notre Dame did go on their run in the first half without Carly Samuelson on the floor for Stanford and with the junk defense at the same time. Here's McCall open for three. Lindsay Allen with her ninth rebound to go along with six assists. Should we put her on triple-double uh, alert yet? Not quite yet, she's not scoring enough. But that might change right here. Nope, Young had the put back and it was blocked by Smith. Smith's got deep position, missed her. I think if you get early offense against Notre Dame, you gotta take it. That's a whistle and a foul on Agumba Wale, her second. We were at practice yesterday, and we know Tara Vanderveer prepared her team for every situation, including the jump defense that she anticipated that she might see. Samuelson, the call. No double came. She didn't square up. Gave it back outside, and a nice feed. McPhee to Smith. Back to six. They have really done a great job in the second half, being more aggressive. It's exactly what Tara Vanderveer told Allison Williams they were going to do. They have sliced 10 points off of the deficit here in the third quarter. And now Notre Dame feels a little game pressure here, and that's where you feel comfortable with Lindsey Allen calling the shots. Another offensive rebound. The Irish with multiple second chance opportunities. A review underway at the monitor. They trying to see if that hit the rim for a reset or not. It did reset to 27, uh, to, uh, back up to 30. Didn't look like it. Two fifty-three to go in the third. Notre Dame has been up by as many as sixteen, but Stanford has chipped away at the lead. This will give us a better angle here. 
And that did not hit the rim. So there should not have been a reset. So we get that view that all basketball fans love, the back shirts of the officials and the wonderful people along Press Row <laughs> joining us here in Lexington. But they want to get it right. They want to get it right. This is for a spot in the Final Four. Well, the Notre Dame men's hockey team looks to clinch a trip to the Frozen Four in Chicago later today. The Fighting Irish will face UMass Lowell at 3.30 Eastern on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Father Jenkins already has reason to rejoice, Debbie. The Notre Dame fencing team brought home another national championship today. Way to be all over it, Beth. I believe that's a nine. Number nine for the Irish fencers. Of course, the Stanford women's volleyball team won a national championship with a very young team last fall. They will be uh, favorites to repeat next year. One of the things that Stanford has done very well to take the fans out for the Irish is move the ball and put some game pressure on it on uh, Notre Dame. And take a look at the ball movement right here. McCall inside faces up. And they look inside. McPhee does a great job with a bounce pass and a leave inside for Alana Smith. See, when you make plays in the shoot, it's hard to bring help. That's what Notre Dame is missing from their offense without Turner is that high-low game and the alley-oops. But what they've done to counter with that is they put Jackie Young or Enrique Gumbawale on the elbow and they let them go off the elbow to the rim. All right, so there you see it uh, on the uh, score bug there. The shot clock will be down to two. Two seconds on the shot clock. And let's see where they're going to give the Irish the inbound out near midcourt. Got time to catch and shoot with two seconds on the clock. You got time for a bounce. Yeah. Got time for a cup of coffee. Uh, are you? I'm buying if you're flying. <laughs> I got work to do here, but now it's just going to be one second, so probably no bounce here. Young to inbound. This is where you miss Turner, because you could throw the alley-oop. Mabry had it blocked by Samuelson. So after all that, it ends up being Stanford ball anyways. And a break for both teams yep. to catch their breath. Let's see if Stanford, which had the momentum before that lengthy stoppage, can keep it. McPhee for three. Air ball. Oh, that may have... That may have hurt. Yeah, you stand around. Yeah. You stand around for a little bit. Because McPhee had a hot hand. She's got 16 to lead the way. You don't want that sweat to dry no. now. Gumbawale curling into the lane, trying to get around McPhee. Good defense, but then they couldn't corral it. Gumbawale is not looking to pass when she goes to the paint. They've held her to just two points in this third quarter. Allen. Took a bump, and we'll head to the line. I always say that Notre Dame plays the games the game like servants. You serve the game to make your teammates better. You cut hard, you screen well, you make the extra pass. You do all the detail work. You serve the game, you make the game better. And Lindsey Allen is the captain of that for this team. What a great take, smart IQ from the top, sensing her team needed something making her 149th start. Hasn't missed a game for the Irish. This is her 19th NCAA tournament start today. Well, she was my vote for the ACC Player of the Year. I felt very strongly about how well she played in leading this team to the ACC regular season title. Inside McCall, nice dish from Sneezek. Five-point game. Two minutes to go in the third. How about a little box and one, it looks like, by St uh, Sanford? 
little sagging man. They just picked up their pressure on uh, Mabry. Allen, she's gonna have to make shots, Beth, because Mabry and Agumba Wiley got the best defenders on them. Samuelson found some space and nails the three. What a big shot in transition. Again, back-to-back -back quick scores. Early offense, Beth. That's how you yep. got to beat the Irish. Nelson. Probably not for happy with that shot. Fifth option on the floor. She's open. They, the they got her. Samuelson wide open look. It was too open. That's the best look she's had all game. Final minute of the quarter. Allen, the hesitation, the kick out. Young will pull up. And a bump and a foul at midcourt. They're going to give that to Agumba Wale. That's her third. And Tara Vandiver is questioning whether that was an intentional foul or not. Obviously, Agumba Wale was trying to stop the break. Coach Vandiver is not pleased. I think she's making a play on the ball. Yep. But that is her third foul. Back to the 2-3 zone, but you better know where number 44 in black is, Carly Samuelson. The lob to McPhee, who scores! Sneezik! You got distributing well! That's Tara Vanderveer again. What a great set! Perfect time for the back door. 16 point deficit is down to two. See, that's a smart play by Mary. You Typically she would have taken that shot, but they're going for the last possession here. Allen, young to beat the buzzer. McCall with the rebound. And then they're gonna get her for a walk and Notre Dame may be able to get up another shot here. Again here, Beth, you, were, you missed Turner because this is where you can throw the alley-oop on an out-of-bounds play. Look for Jackie Young in the middle for the tap. Number five in white. And with that in mind, Stanford wants to get some size on the right. floor with Johnson on the ball. <laughs> get Sneezik out. They'll put the 6 3 defender on the ball. Now it's going to Goomba Wale. There it is. Got it up. Won't go. Big third quarter comeback for Stanford. Allison will chat with Muffet McGraw on the other side. Watch this play right here. Beautifully executed. Great screen by McCall. Bucket, Stanford. Welcome back as we get ready to start the fourth quarter between Stanford and Notre Dame here with Irish head coach Muffet McGraw. Coach, how has Stanford made this a two-point game? Well, they're making wide open threes. We're uh, having a tough time finding them in transition. We're doing a really poor job in the zone. What do you plan to do defensively in the fourth quarter? You've done a lot of different things so far. Find something that works right now. Nothing's really working, so just got to see what we can come up with. Muffet, thank you. Let's go inside the play now, Debbie. Okay, take a look at this player right here, McPhee, and then watch how they do such a good job of screening the backside of the zone. As the as they're cut through here, this occupies this defender and this defender, and then you're gonna see McPhee get to the rim. It's a very well executed play. McCall sets a terrific screen, and the cut through on the baseline by Smith occupies Young, gives McPhee a straight line lane to the rim. Comebacks, Allison, have been a huge part of the story in the postseason for Stanford. They really have, Debbie, and whenever they have their backs up against the wall, Stanford tells each other, they're code red. It's what they say when they have to find a way to get the job done by any means necessary. It's a reminder to play more aggressive and with more urgency. And it has worked because in four of the last five games, they have had comebacks of seven or more. Raleigh, the shot won't go. The Irish owned the second quarter, but Stanford dominated the third. And now a chance to tie it or take the lead. McPhee for three more. And there it is. Stanford has come on the way back and gone on top. The extra pass, the quick look to the block. It flattened. 
straightens out the Irish defense. They are not doing a good job in transition at all on the defensive end. 11 triples ties their season high, and Mabry responds with a drive. McCall runs ahead of the ball every time and looks for an early post up, and Alana Smith and McCall together have been terrific at running ahead of the basketball. Final nine minutes here for a spot in the final four. Foul inside. McCall and Samuelson, the seniors, went to the final four as freshmen, trying to bookend their career with trips. Fighting Irish missed out last year at the hands of Stanford in the Sweet 16. And for Muffet McGraw, she has never lost on Elite Eight games, 7-0. What an incredible basketball game we have had. This has been fantastic. You've had every piece of drama that you could ever expect to have in a game. The two legendary coaches, it's a chess match. It's also a tie game, under nine to play. Bowley, the three ball, which was there for Notre Dame and the Sweet 16 not happening today. Wally, lucky she didn't pick up her fourth right there. You know, all of a sudden, Notre Dame's rhythm is gone. They're not yeah. reversing the basketball. They're not getting any cut through the lane. They're not getting a piece of the paint on their cuts or with the basketball. Not as many assists as they usually have. Stanford right now is the team that's gotten its mojo back, and there's McPhee. 23 now for Brittany. Really crafty. Lazy pass by Allen, and it's taken away. Sneezik. Hell ball stays here. The Sneezik missed some layups just in the last game, and uh, Coach Vanderveer let her know about it after the game. But you know what, Sneezik has played well here in the second half, and she came up with two big defensive plays against Texas late in the game. Samuelson and McPhee, the two shooters on the same side, and then Allen gets possession for the Irish. Notre Dame is completely unconnected right now defensively. They had two players on the basketball on Samuelson. Will the leadership of Allen be able to carry them through down the stretch? Avery. Off the hesitation, goes to the left hand for the land. This is the second time she's been able to get that shot off with her counter. She's made three baskets in this half with her left hand. Open look, Stanford. Third year in a row, they are trying to knock each other out of the NCAA tournament. Notre Dame won two years ago. Stanford won last year. Bowley to kick out. Good. Much better time for Bowley to take that shot. Good pass by Young. The third three of the day. I think if Notre Dame goes back to their Princeton action and runs their offense through the elbows, I think Stanford will struggle guarding that. Irish really have to shade left with both shooters over there on the overload. Shot clock's down to five. Alana Smith. That's going to go to Notre Dame. And Tara Vanderveer on the officials right over there by the bench. And was that a warning? She was up and fiery and water sprayed out onto the floor. How many times do you think Tara Vanderveer in her career has argued with an official over there on the sideline? A million? Probably. Very fortunate though right there that it was not more serious. A response from the official. Self, don't carry the water bottle. It, well, first of all, it's got to be in that It's cup, in the right? regulation yeah, NCAA exactly. cup. Exactly. And there's signs all over the building that say. But apparently, well, we, we couldn't see the, the accidental spill. She was 
trying to show Chuck Gonzalez that her player was hacked on the arm. Thirty-one years, a couple of championships, over a thousand wins. And uh, we've seen her fiery and firing up her team all weekend, Allison. Yeah, Beth, I loved this moment as she assembled the entire team for their practice yesterday here at Rupp Arena. She told them very simply, look at these nets. Decide right now how bad you want to cut them down because if you want it bad enough, they will be yours. Of course, there's McCall with the rebound. When Tara went to the nets, I thought she was talking about, hey, we can transition out of these nets. Look how wide they are at the bottom. You can get the ball out of the glass off the, off the rim and go. She's had a lot of pride in this blue-collar lunch pail type of play. Stanford methodically working their way back from a 16-point deficit. Even again, punch, counter punch, and it's possession for possession, exactly how we thought it would go as we mentioned at the beginning of the game. These two teams are so good offensively. Who can make the least amount of mistakes in the last 540? Take away by the Stanford defense. That's a mistake by Notre yep. Dame. Smith open inside, assisted by McPhee. So worried about Carly Samuelson running the baseline that two Notre Dame players on the back of the zone jump. And that left Smith wide open. Carly Samuelson, three triples in the first half, a deep three here in the second. And John says, high five, baby. for a spot on the final four in Dallas. Stanford has come back from a 16-point deficit and are up two on the Fighting Irish. Brittany McPhee, 23 points to lead the way and the defensive job on Agumba Wale in the second half. Arike had 21 in the first, just two since. Yeah, it's Brittany McPhee. There's a switch right there on Smith. I like the set off the timeout. Muffin McGraw gets Agumba Wale on a pin down with her right hand going right, which is where she is the most dangerous off the bounce. Second foul on Smith will get Agumba Wale to the line. You don't have to overcoach anything right now if you're either coach. You put the ball in the hands of the players that you trust through repetition, the plays that you've run a hundred million times in practice. Maybe 100 million is a little too much, but it's repetition. You know that, you know, yeah, you get the drift. Agumba Wale ties it at 66. Will the Irish be hurt by Brianna Turner's absence on the defensive end? They don't have the same athleticism on the front line without her. They don't have the rim protector. Sneezek almost lost it. Allen draped on Samuelson, steps away. And doesn't get it to go. Oh, great hustle by Jackie Young to outwork Smith on the glass. Neighbors good off the bounce today. Not so much from downtown. All the baskets she's made in the second half have been with her left hand. Meanwhile, McPhee and Samuelson have both hit five triples at this end. Mabry on Samuelson. There's the switch. Notre Dame switching on everything, and they're man-to-man. -man. Remember, we've seen them play a lot of zone in this game, a lot of jump. They're going straight up man. McPhee draws a foul on Young. You know what? I think I like that from Muffin McGraw. You know, that's it. We're not playing zone. We're not junking it up. We want to go to the Final Four. You better guard. We're going to man up and try and win it 1v1. But it's McPhee that gets the uh, trip to the line here. She has had a heck of a second half. Brittany McPhee started the season, the beginning of the year, with 28 points against Texas. It was sort of her breakout. Put her on the towards the top yeah. of the scouting report, yeah. Beth. Well, she's got her second 20-point game of the tournament now. And leading the way with 25 for the Cardinal. Avery, constant motion. Puts up the three and hits.
that's it. What a tough bucket. With McCall stretched out to defend a contested triple. Puts the Irish up. Four minutes to go. Isolation. McPhee. McCall second chance. Trying to get it away from the Irish. She's tied up, but they'll keep it. What a tremendous job by her to keep her balance. That's the right call. That was a set we haven't seen from Tara. Yeah. Pulling out all the stops now, and an offensive foul on the screen on Alana Smith. Dribble handoff and an emphasis this year. And let's see, did she have time and space? I don't know about that. Ooh. That's a tough call at this time in the game. Agreed. Set with the senior Allen, who reminded us yesterday at practice, every possession matters in the postseason. Here's a big one for the Irish. She'll take it herself. McCall rebounds the miss. But Sneezik has done a really good job of pushing. And what she'll get to the line. She has made some really good decisions in transition today. That's the third foul on Young. Sneezik to the line, 71% for the sophomore from McLean, Virginia. And this is what you dream about. Both these teams from last year to where they are now, this is the moment, you know, to a chance to go to the final four. Neither was there a year ago. The one seed and the two seed here at Rupp Arena in Lexington. And Mabry wants the basketball. Mabry going off the bounce and gets to the rim. She has been terrific in the second half. Marina Mabry now with 20. Irish back up. She wants the ball. You can tell when a player has that competitive drive. Mabry's got it. Allen denying Samuelson, so they got to go back to sneeze it. Jackie Young's got it. What a big play. That's a good scout defense right there. That is a set we've seen Sanford run against Texas and score off of it. Good D by Young. Pressure the ball. Shot clock is down to five. Agumba Wale will try and create. And it's blocked by McPhee. Yeah, see, that's where being a little selfish costs the Irish a possession. And you can see Muffet McGraw. Marina Mabry was open on that cut. Well, we saw at the end of the Purdue game, and I asked Muffet McGraw about it. Enrique Agumbawale doesn't want to give the ball up in a late clock situation. She wants it. Sometimes that's good, and sometimes it's not. Chance for Stanford to take the lead. McPhee. Off the good ball fake for two. 27 for McPhee. Cardinal up one. Another Princeton action. This will be a late on ball. Sanders is trying to. Keep track of Mabry. Allen fouled by McCall. You know Stanford is switching on that action, and there's a late ball screen, late in the shot clock possession. And Lindsey Allen makes a terrific play. The senior trying to extend her career another weekend. Two for four at the line so far. Seven points, ten rebounds, six assists. And our tenth tie of the night.
Double on Samuelson. Final minute to the final four. Smith off the dribble, gets to the left side. Hard post up by McCall, occupied help. Plays in the shoot right now. Allen into the lane, she gets the pull up. Timeout, Stanford. 75-74, Irish as we go back and forth. We have not seen Stanford go to their horn series much. It's a flare screen by Smith, a hard post up by McCall, occupied West Belt, no help on the drive. And then Allen, I'll just keep it myself this time. 10 ties, 17 lead changes. The possession arrow is with Notre Dame. Both teams have a timeout. Remember, in the women's game, if you have a timeout, you can use it to advance the ball to midcourt. 35 seconds to go and a one point Notre Dame lead. Winner is moving on to Dallas. We know both coaches spent time on sideline out of bounds because of the late game situation here. Music lines it inside to Smith to catch in traffic and the finish. Shot clock is off. Notre Dame down one. No timeout. And for Notre Dame, they're playing through. There's a foul, just the fourth team foul on Stanford. Good they foul. had one to give. Good foul. We're gonna make Notre Dame inbound it again. Fourth foul on Sneezik. Stanford by one. Allen gets to take a shot with a chance for a rebound. Weaving away in, gets a defender in the air, shot on the shot, out of bounds to the Irish. 2.2 seconds to go. Substitute Kaylee Johnson, size coming on for Stanford. They gotta take a look at the clock. Yeah, Notre Dame get, has one timeout, yep. Beth, and they may not want to use it now. See, Muffin McGraw can use this as a timeout yep. to make sure they're in the right set, but so can Tara Vanderveer to make sure they're in the right defense. And a reminder once again, no Brianna Turner here for Notre Dame. Their star center out with the ACL injury. The other thing is you can check to make sure you got the call right yep. on who the ball belongs to, not just the clock. I believe the call was Notre Dame. But they want to make sure. And so with one timeout left, Muffin McGraw saving that in case they have trouble getting the ball in bounce. Who do you like with this shot for the Irish? Yeah, I like Agumba Wale off the bounce, or I like Marina Mavery off the bounce. I'm sure she's going to let Lindsay Allen inbound it. That's her best passer. And you got to get to the glass. I think they started that play too late. And now Tara will use a timeout. Each side with one left. Let's take a look at today's Capital One Cup impact performance. A point shy of a career high for Brittany McPhee with 27 today. Brittany McPhee has been terrific, especially in the second half. And she's guarded Agumba Wale most of the second half. Stanford got it back with their transition game. They did a nice job of running the floor hard and wide. Notre Dame didn't match up, but McPhee crafty around the basket and has put Stanford in a position to be able to score in all three levels, put a lot of pressure on Notre Dame's defense with her transition game. The Irish have never lost an Elite Eight. Can they pull one out here to stay perfect? And now McGraw will use her final timeout. So they come out with the same set 
that Tara Vanderveer called the timeout on. And now Muffin McGraw uses her last timeout, and I'm sure they're going to change the play here. Well, we've seen a lot of Notre Dame this year. They love that lob into Turner in the paint. Of course, Turner's not around, and Stanford has some size, so they're going to have to make an adjustment here and go somewhere else. So you put size on the ball, and you don't have time to really do anything to trap or anything like that. You just got to make sure you have a high hands on a contest. You do not foul. You switch on everything, and you make sure you secure the rebound. 76-75, Stanford by one. Wow, what a game, what an incredible game. For the first spot in the final four in Dallas to the winner. Two Hall of Fame coaches. Vanderveer and McGraw. Over 1,800 wins. Trying to add one more. Same set for Notre Dame. Allen will inbound. Look for a Goombawale. There is a Goombawale. Off the bounce, blocked by McCall. Stanford wins, and the Cardinal are heading to the final. team for a long time as you see McCall makes the block from behind that is as emotional as I think I have ever seen her post game and she told me before the game this was going to be emotional for her either way wow the reaction from the Cardinal Tara referenced the third quarter it was a 24 12 advantage for Stanford in that third and Allison Brittany McPhee and Carly Samuelson's three-point shooting a big reason why they rallied a couple of big smiles over here with Brittany and Carly and Brittany I'll start with you what was the turning point in this game I think I mean obviously it was when we got down we really came together I mean for me it was realizing these are my best friends in the whole wide world and I don't want to stop playing with them so that was kind of it for me Carly what was being discussed in the final timeouts with just two seconds left and you knew your defense had to get it done I mean we got to get a stop no foul and don't let him get a shot up you can see the smiles here I know you guys are having so much fun what does it mean to be able to go to the final four together it's amazing I mean we've had my freshman year Britt hasn't gone yet I'm so happy to go with Britt and me and Berg get one more game maybe two so let's go how much was that in your minds in the second half in the second half, honestly, I was just thinking about this game and winning this game just for the seniors, and obviously it's the biggest part that we get to go to the Final Four. Brett, thank you so much, Carly. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck in Dallas. 
Stanford's moving on. Carly Samuelson is headed to the Final Four. Perhaps her sister, Katie Lou, will also be there when UConn takes the floor tomorrow. John Samuelson will be headed to Bridgeport to watch that one. Stanford is in, the first team to the Final Four in a date with South Carolina or Florida State on Friday. That game will be tomorrow. So will the UConn-Oregon game. Don't forget, coming up 7.30 tonight, it's Baylor and Mississippi State. For Debbie Antonelli, Allison Williams, I'm Beth Moen. So long from Lexington. Now back to the studio. All right.